Hey everybody, you're listening to the High Sessions Hawaii Podcast, where we talk about everything local and beyond. I'm John Yamasato, your host, and joining me today is Mr. Kyle Shimabukuro and Devin Nikoba. Uh, there is Facebook. Oh wait, before we begin, let me remind our listeners of all the ways they can stay in touch with the show. There's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all at High Sessions. Go to SoundCloud, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. Listen to the podcast, and you can email us at highsessions at yahoo.com. If you're a fan of the show and would like to help the show, go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and donate. There you'll get more involved with the show and help determine who and what is filmed. Kyle and and I have worked tirelessly on a new uh, t-shirt design, which is complete. Thank goodness. Oh, really? You came yeah. up with something? Yeah. yeah. For 2024. So, yeah, uh, it's not that weird stick figure thing, right? It kind of is. It kind is of it? is. Yeah. Oh, stick figure thing. The thing that I showed you, Dora? It's a refined stick figure thing. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually pretty cool. I'm pretty, pretty <laughs> happy with it. After. How come I don't... Yeah, I'm like, how no. come I never... No, I literally... We were working on it before stuff. we like came here today. The thing shows up and I go, oh, that's the shirt design we're using. before we came. <laughs> so... Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, um... Nice jacket, yeah, by I'm, the way. I'm, I was... John. going to get to that. Oh. Yeah. So, uh... Okay. Um... What was that? I might train of thought is all off. Uh... So, yeah. If you want the shirt... You have to be a patron. Yes. And patrons get a shirt every year, and it's a specific shirt to the year. So once the shirt, the year goes by, you never get to see that shirt and again. You, and you cannot join, get the shirt, and then not be a patron well, well, member there. Because that, that would go against the actual spirit of the whole Patreon would. thing. It would. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Unless see. you can sign up for like $100. Yeah. Then you can for the money, yeah. Sure. More than more than one shirt if you want, I guess. Uh, Kupu Kupu Landscape lamp, Landscape Architects. You can call Kevin Yokomura over there, eight zero eight seven two two eight six eight five for a free estimate, or go to Kupu Kupu Landscaping dot com, uh, Fort Ruger Market. You can find food there. I had the Rugerlicious again today, and I had someone say to me, John, how can you eat Rugerlicious every week for twenty weeks straight? And I say, it's that good. And sometimes, and <laughs> well, also, I, it hasn't been twenty weeks straight. It's been it's almost been like but, two years yeah. straight. Well, that yeah. and I, I eat it sometimes on days that we're not filming yeah. the podcast. I'll go in and get a Rugerlicious bowl. So that's how much I like it. And I've made, I've converted, not converted, but I've shown some people this Poke Bowl and they like it. So okay. converted is, is that the kind of person you are though when you like something, you just do yes. it all the time? Like just have yes, it? I don't like surprises. Mm. So, <laughs> Interesting. so good thing you had kids then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, uh, you can find Devin at Kumu94.7 in the mornings and go to highlifeclothing.com. Wood Sunway, yes. Go to highlifeclothing.com to find Kyle. And uh, you can find, I'm wearing this, I, I love this thing. This is a, a jacket that Kyle, um, this, gave is a, you. this is a defect one, so Kyle gave it to me. But functionally, it's like all the other jackets you'll find at the store. I, I lo- it's been great. What's the defect? It's got a stain on it. Somewhere in there, there's a stain. I don't know where it is. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And then I just spilled poke on it too. So there's multiple stains on this jacket. <laughs> okay. I only had it for about 20 minutes. But it was raining it's outside. Nice. And you, you, I, I didn't get wet at all. Well, I mean, I set my head, but in my but hands. But there is a hood. I got one for you yeah. too. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, it's completely waterproof. You know I was going to ask him. Yeah, you didn't yeah, cry yeah. if not. No, no, pretty yeah. much. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So if, you, if you're in the, in the market for a weatherproof jacket, I highly recommend this one because it's exactly available what I was at, Available for. at the High Life store. Available at the High Life store. Because, you know, my son plays baseball. I'm out there sometimes. It's raining. This would be nice to just stick it in a bag. Really? You actually wait out there in the rain? Yeah. Out of time, you said, son, good luck. <laughs> in the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you let me know when you ball. No, no, no. no? I, well, a lot of times when it rains, though, they stop the game with baseball. But oh. so it wouldn't be a heavy rain. It would be a light drizzle or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Otherwise, they're not playing. I can't see you standing in the rain, man. <laughs> Yeah. I just can't. Well, I have my umbrella. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. That leads us to our guest today. Sorry that it took so long, Daniel. But we have a Daniel Young here from Young's Fish Market. He is the head honcho yeah. of Young's Fish Market, running the show the over King there. King Lolo. <clears throat> and uh, we're all familiar with uh, with the restaurant, I guess you could say, and, uh, and have eaten there multiple times. Mm-hmm. Fresh fish, some of the best fish in the island. We were just talking about fish the other day. Day about how it's a pretty rough business 
right? I mean, or it's a competitive business, right? The the fresh fish market. But yeah, yeah, the market is is very competitive, which is kind of why we got out of it and transitioned to doing more Hawaiian food. Oh, I see. Over I see. the years, um, it's it's much more stable and and uh, easier to deal with the product. Mm. But yeah. you guys still do poke and all that stuff, right? Yeah, we still do poke, and there's some fish in in like our lao lao and stuff like that. Mm. But as far as uh, overall business, it's really a small portion now mm. for us. Yeah. So you kind of expanded into other things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mainly Hawaiian food and other you know. Local By the way, favorites. butterfish lao lao, game changer. <coughs> if you've never <coughs> been to Young's and eaten the butterfish lao lao, brah. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. But you mean no joke? You mean like. Instead it's of just having one small piece, yeah, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a, all butter big, fish. It's like, a, so there's a nice chunk of steak yeah. inside there. Yeah, nah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. And they cook it. They cook it for so long that the <clears> actually <throat> the it's got bones in it and stuff. But they cook it so long that you can just eat the whole thing, bones and all. It just all falls really? apart. Yeah, it's, yeah, ama- it's well, amazing. Sorry, <clears throat> I, I was probably supposed to lead into that later on, but <clears throat> it's so good. I had to. I had to mention it. You know what I grew? I'd up, never seen it. Yeah, you know what I grew up eating at Young's because I went to um, HCC, so we used to always just walk over and eat over there. Um, the when tur- he went to class, the turkey which was tail. Very rare. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, turkey yeah. tail is another one. Yeah, yeah. Turkey, don't ever get rid of that. Popular. That's yeah. so good. Not good, good for you, but no, not good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, obviously, not good for me, but it's really good to eat. <laughs> Okay, well, well, let's let's back up a little bit, as Devin would, yeah, would want yeah, us to go. do. But uh, you're a young guy, so mm-hmm. how are you? Because Young Fish Market's been around a long time. So, so mm-hmm. let's give us the history of how you became involved with the company and and how you got to where you are today. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it was I'm third generation uh, running the operation. Uh, it was started by my grandparents, my grandfather more specifically on my father's side, oh. and he. Um, Started it back in 1951, so we're wow. coming up on 75 years pretty that's, soon. That's amazing. Um, what was the yeah. first um, market at? First market was out on uh, Liliha Street, um, right below Liliha and Kuakini. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, right next to uh, like Meg's. I mean, not Meg's. Uh, Jane's Fountain. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, and we had that shop open for about 50 years, I believe. Uh, closed in. A, like 2000, 2001, around there. Um, and uh, we basically consolidated to the one location on uh, in the City Square Shopping Center mm-hmm. in 2000. Um, and then in 2018, well, latter half of 2018, we opened one in Kapolei. And mm. we, so now we have one in Kalihi and, and one in Kapolei. And and was was that always the plan for you? Like when you were growing up, like I'm gonna take over this business and I I want to be in the restaurant business, or is it something you've kind of they told you you have to do? <laughs> like it's one of these family things. Like, hey, guess what, Daniel? You have a future, <laughs> and it's uh, looking like it has to do with food. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it we all grew up like my sisters and I. We grew up kind of helping out and working in the business um but my my father was always one that he wanted to give us the choice whether or not we wanted to do it um because for them they were forced by you know my Your grandparents parents, yeah. to to kind of work in the, the mm. business and that was you know kind of standard practice back in the day right you know you have a business then your kids are going to work in it um yeah. But that's, for why us, we, the, that's why you have the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wash the pots. And exactly. all that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he, he always, um, you know, gave us the choice to do it. Um, but I always, always enjoyed food and cooking and um, saw the, the interest in, for me of having my own business kind of thing and, and being able to kind of direct where it goes and what, you know, what to do with it uh, always interested me as well. So uh, it was kind of a, just a natural uh, segue for me to just you know go into the business. It's such a tough business to be in, especially <clears> in <throat> this time. I mean, was there ever a point when you were washing dishes as a kid or emptying the garbage? You're like, I don't want to do this when I get old. <laughs> or did you always just knew that you were just kind of like grooming yourself to be that one day? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, like doing the dishes and and. The taking out the trash part, it's, it's kind of like a rite of passage. But, <laughs> you know, 
it, you're not going to be doing that <laughs> all the time. You know, you so hopefully, I'm hope, hire somebody. Yeah, hope, <laughs> hopefully you can you can move out of that that, yeah, that role yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, for for me, I I I always had dreams of you know, kind of building the brand and and kind of uh, growing it and expanding into different things and and uh, so uh, you know I think when in you know the next f- five to ten years we have some pretty interesting things that kind of lined up to to build the brand so did you go to school for business and all that kind of <clears throat> stuff or okay so uh, in in the interest of full disclosure um, his family and my family lived on the same street for a long time. In Kailua. In Kailua, yeah. yeah. We won't say exactly because otherwise everybody can go to his house and yeah, go for yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um But we lived on the street from each other. And it's funny because uh, your dad was always working so much. Like, we'd never see that guy. Mm-hmm. They would come oh. home and then they would leave before we all got up. Oh, but yeah. we knew that, uh, I think my dad had mentioned to me, he goes, hey, by the way, so that house over there, that's the young people. I'm like, young who? It's like the young fish market people. I was like, oh, no way. So you just camping outside their front yard? No, no, no. no. <laughs> we, gave, we gave them the privacy. Okay, good. But, I mean, uh, but Daniel is significantly younger than me. Yeah. Oh, and Do you remember us, Devin so. as a kid, like the irritating older neighbor walking around the neighborhood? Or? No, no, no. He was, oh. he was always very professional at that time because he, <laughs> yeah. he was in office. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so he came to your door with his lay and yeah, yeah, yeah. Please for me. <laughs> yeah. we'll always see him with the, you know, the his sign. sign on the side of the, the road. Sign and the, 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 guy. Big, the big fake carnation layer on yeah. his neck oh that's hey, around the poly and, and the disgruntled friend mm. being forced to wave on the yeah. side going uh, pretty much yeah, yeah, yeah. but um no the uh one thing i wanted to share was their their family is always so giving and really really nice because when the i think it was eva i forget but we had a we had a big storm and everybody's power went out and the dad was like hey Come get ice because every it was like three days in I think and nobody oh, had electricity wow. but yeah. for some reason they had electricity they had uh, ice and maybe he's he had like, hey, electricity come. at the store or was it from his house you know I don't know uh, to this day I don't know but he yeah, he no, was he, super he brought generous. it he brought it from the the store yeah yeah wow. but yeah. he was he was so generous because he shared it with everybody on our on our in our cul de sac in our street and he didn't have to do something like that oh, yeah mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it was that was I I always remember that about about your dad is mm-hmm. he, was, he was always I mean he never give us fish or anything but that's okay because <laughs> you gotta yeah. sell I that to stuff sell that. yeah you gotta sell that stuff fish is expensive yeah very expensive well, I see, yeah, I see. exactly <laughs> that's but, gold <laughs> but, yeah, but they were always you know they, they were such a really nice family very unassuming yeah. and very um they just kind of did their thing and uh, I was always very impressed by uh, by his family so mm-hmm. it's oh, it's neat i you. i forgot that you'd taken over the business and we mm-hmm. was doing this so today i was like oh my gosh it's that guy it's that kid who's running around who's running around the thing yeah no um but yeah no i i was i was i was going to school for uh business mm-hmm. uh and at uh and during my freshman year my <clears throat> excuse me my auntie passed away and she was my my dad's partner at the time, mm-hmm. and and so uh, at the end of my freshman year, you know, I, I kind of made the decision to stop school because I was kind of you know going to school just to get into the business anyway, um, and and help out my dad. So I, I never finished and, and got a degree, but you know, just had you know real life experience working with my my dad in in yeah. the business. So yeah, that's yeah. invaluable. Yeah, I mean, you know, to get that kind of experience yeah. on on site. I, I was just talking to a friend of mine about uh, the real estate business, and you know, to learn the business, you can go to all the classes you want, but you really got to get out there and in front of people, you know, because a lot of it is just one-on-one communication stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So knowing uh, where to order stuff from, who to talk to, you know, if you need this thing, you go talk to this guy. Th- that's all stuff that. Hard to learn trial by error, you know, trial by error. Yeah, you can't beat that kind of education, yeah. Yeah, there, yeah there's yeah. lots of stuff they won't tell you in, in college, you know. Yeah. The small little trade secrets and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you only you only find out by by working in the in the industry. Yeah. So what's up um what is one of the really <clears throat> good lessons you got from your dad kinda of early on? <laughs> uh, I mean one of the, the best ones was is just, you know, building those relationships, um uh with your vendors with your customers you know every every relationship is important um that's that's one that was always uh very much uh 
kind of like ground into me from, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, from, from, into from him <laughs> but you know like as the years went on and, and, and where i am now like i i really appreciate him giving that that advice mm. because you know especially here in hawaii i mean relationships are everything oh yeah you know mm. everybody knows everybody <clears throat> yeah you're, you're literally one one step removed from somebody <laughs> So let me let me ask this question. It's kind of on my mind. Uh, unless Devin, you had something. Okay. So uh, having a small like mom and pop business, what are some of the struggles that you see today in in starting something like that versus? Because I mean, there's so many conglomerates trying to take over all the spaces of even even restaurant business, food business, and stuff. We've lost a lot over the yeah. pandemic. Yeah, we've a lost lot a lot of, of them. Family-owned yeah. businesses. Yeah, because the because mm-hmm. the older family members are like, there's nobody to take over this thing. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's just definitely it's a, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So people, I mean, it kind of seems like you know, in the in the younger generation, they just they're not as interested as in, in putting in the same amount of work and time and dedication to something. Um, uh, they're a little more interested into like you know what what can happen now versus you know, what I can, what can I build, mm. but you know. <clears throat> do you have children now? I do. I have three daughters. Oh wow! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is anyone looking interested in taking over someday? Uh, well, they're, well, he's, they're, he's they're still young. young. Yeah. yeah. So my my oldest one is uh, five and a half right now. Oh my okay. god! <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta wait never to never too young yeah. to yeah. train them though. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, there, there's there's a long way before they they, they even understand. really understand yeah. what what it's all about. But you know they they've seen um, the the restaurant and they've come in a, a couple times. And the oldest one will you know help you know cover the the bowls of poi and stuff like that a little bit when when they're there. But yeah. for the, for the most part, it's 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 like a game for them, you know. Mm. Uh, and that's actually the yeah. best way to get them indoctrinated, right? Because yeah. they get, they come into the store, they go, oh, I can I can wander around, and Auntie gonna help me, and you you make it sort of a, a work mm-hmm. play thing. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. as they get older, then you go, oh yeah. So now <laughs> this all you get to do all this stuff. We're not gonna pay you because you you're in the family, but mm-hmm. this is the stuff you got to yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> but at least you got three to you got three to choose from, so that's the that's the chance. Yeah. Yeah. Three, three chances. <laughs> Find somebody in there. And do you have two sisters? Two older sisters. Two yeah. older sisters? Yeah. Okay. So are they involved with the business as well, too? Uh, my oldest sister is. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> after my dad passed away um, back in 2013, uh, she came on about, about a year, year and a half after, because um, she was working in the hotels yeah. uh, before. And she came in, and she's been working with me since 2014, I think. How there. how ready were you for that whole transition? Because, I mean, I can't imagine all of a sudden you've got to take everything on yourself. Because twen- that wasn't that long ago, but, I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, I wasn't, I wasn't really ready for that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, was, it was a very sudden thing. Um, uh my dad was kind of in the position where he was slowly giving me more responsibility. Was you know, he semi retired? Yeah, not. I wouldn't go that far, but he was he was giving me more, taking you know, a little more time off, and you know, not needing to come in and as early and stuff like that. Stay as late, you know. He would you know let me do a little bit more of the stuff. So, um, in, in a sense, that was a good thing that. I was already taking on some of that stuff when it happened, but yeah. you know he took his, that first. That was actually his first trip off uh, out of the country, besides like going to Canada. Mm. Um, he was on a trip with my mom in Japan, mm. and uh, they were going to Sikiji Fish Market in the morning, and he just uh, kind of just collapsed on the side oh, of the road. Mm, so, sorry to hear that. Yeah, um, but he, it was it was very much abrupt and. I wouldn't say I was ready for it, but it was kind of, you know, as prepared and and the relationships that my dad had built and and kind of introduced me to over the years um, really helped. Like Mm -hmm. I was able to lean on a lot of the, his friends, yeah, our suppliers and stuff like that. And, you know, they all kind of helped, helped me out and, and we were able to just kind of keep things, 
uh, flowing and operating. And then uh, yeah. COVID. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was a, a wrench Bruh. that I never saw coming. <laughs> Holy yeah. smokes, man. How did you guys um, survive that? <clears throat> I mean, we, we, we did okay. Um, was there a lot of takeouts? Uh, it, yeah, I mean, thankfully, yeah. we, yeah, they, we are they, kind they of geared to take towards already, the yeah, yeah. takeout, but uh, the, the problem we had was we were building up our catering side of the business, mm. ah. and so it was coming up to, like, you know, where it was, like, 25 30% of our business. Wow. And then, you know, that went to, like, zero overnight. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. So we, we had to get, you know, kind of creative with uh, different options of trying to cater you know so we did more like bento styles and stuff like that where they could do drive-bys for grad parties and mm. birthdays and mm. stuff like that and pick up a bento and go um but uh covid definitely was was a challenge for us but um we, we were able to kind of work around it i mean we we came up with different things we started doing thanksgiving meals um uh, mm-hmm. with you know uh kiabi smoked Kulu style turkey and mm. Ooh, that and, sounds good. Yeah, um, <laughs> that sounds and, good. So we, should, we, we should have had this conversation before we had Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like we, we, uh, <laughs> we we've kept that on on, you know, since since we did it that first year in COVID, and it was uh, it's been a good good seller for us over the years. Yeah. So so now that that we have the your your story set a little bit, let's talk a little bit more about this butterfish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a whole butterfish in a lao lao? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a nice sized um, butterfish steak inside the lao lao. And I mean, that's it. It's just that's a little sick. bit of salt, Dude, butterfish. I'm, I'm not even joking. Leaf. You, you yeah. try this thing and you'll be forever sold. Is that lao lao a little bit more expensive than a normal lao lao? Being that butterfish is pretty it It is expensive. significantly more expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, but it, it's just kind of the nature it doesn't of the beast. matter just it, buy it, it is it is it is highly popular <laughs> yeah and um you know we we sell quite a few of it uh and we sell it every tuesday and friday only hot oh i know there was a reason why when you order regular mm-hmm. lao lao you just get this much butterfish <laughs> <inside. laughs> so yeah, to yeah. think of like a whole lao lao with butterfish is pretty crazy well when did you guys start making that because i don't even remember when that was on the menu uh we've been doing that for quite a few years actually really? um yeah, it's probably been close to twenty years or or really? more. No way. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. We went through a few different um, iterations uh, of it. Iterations early on. Uh-huh. Uh, we, you know, at one point we were using like Chilean sea bass, mm-hmm. um, uh-huh. but you know, like even that, like the price of that went way way high, and uh, so we moved to butterfish, and now you know, butterfish is getting <laughs> expensive yeah. as well. But it's just yeah. you know, right now it the the product is what it is it just has it's built such a uh following that if we were to try and change it it would probably and there's also a season to it as well, well it gives you I a good excuse to uh, take a trip to alaska and catch your own and stuff oh yeah i mean if we were <laughs> going uh farm to table or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um did you ever try other experimental la laos that either failed or was successful in the past yeah i mean we we did a few different ones um we actually did like a little series uh right before covid and we that we were doing it was it was with la lanai Mm -hmm. and um it was like his we did a thing where it was like the la la of the month kind of special um so we did an oxtail la la like a chinese style oxtail that sounds interesting um and that that one was very popular so we've brought it back a couple times as as like a little special yeah yeah it, it's it's really quite good. I mean, it, it's uh, you know because you have to cook the the leaf so long to break it down, it, it breaks down the oxtail just as yeah. just as well. So it, it's a real the, with the bone inside and everything. Yeah, yeah. you got to be right. Yeah, yeah, the the whole bone and everything is in there. <laughs> That'd yeah. be funny. Got to take out the meat from the bone yeah, yeah. inside. <laughs> oxtail this la la. Yeah. 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 But that's yeah. the. Um, but that was the thing I think for you mm-hmm. and me because we're old. Uh, er, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if you ever remember eating uh, like almost plantation style. You get the can of salmon. Yeah. Right. Remember the can of salmon and yeah. you open them up, get the bone in the middle. Yeah. But mm-hmm. when you eat the bone, it's soft yeah, and so you, you can just grind yeah, everything, yeah, right? Everything. And you go, oh, it's the sense memory you get from eating that butterfish because it's mm-hmm. 
cooked so because long it's cooked for so long it just melts and so you eat that and you go oh i remember sitting with my dad you know bust out a can of salmon put them on the table go dinner and you go what and then you eat it mm. and you're like oh yeah. wow and so yeah. it's all this sense memory stuff from being small kid time which is really cool because you don't get that with a lot of foods you can get that definitely with hawaiian food though mm-hmm. and and with stuff like that so you guys yeah. eat sardines yeah, yeah. yeah. good right yeah. yeah yeah why your kids not gonna eat sardines they're not gonna eat sardines yeah, but i remember too. eating that i haven't eaten it in a long time but then i think stace was like oh god sorry you know we're, we're gonna be moving in a couple of months because we're doing a renovation on our oh, house. Oh. So we're, you know, going Eating everything. everything in here. Yeah, we're just trying to, like, get rid of stuff, you know. She's like, oh, there's sardines. I'm like, oh, I eat that. Like, put, you know, you just make them hot, get, get them hot, put them on rice. rice yeah. and you know then, what yeah. my dad used yeah. to do in the morning? Maybe you guys father did this too. Crack the sardines in the pan with a fried egg and just mix it all up and throw it over hot rice. Oh. Which hmm. show you. It yeah. was good. I mean, I don't know if that's plant station style breakfast or something that he learned or something, but I think your father's just lazy. I think I always bring back to I think I always bring back to childhood though, you know? Yeah. Like just yeah. cracking an egg and mixing it all up yeah. in the pan. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, we, we grew up with uh sardines and raw onions. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah mixed yeah, up yeah, yeah, on yeah, hot yeah. rice, shoyu yeah. and maybe a little sesame oil. That's winner too. Yeah. Yeah. There's but, something about the the comfort food yeah. stuff mm-hmm. and, and definitely with Hawaiian food. That brings a lot of that back. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's it's really cool. It's it's tough to make though. It's tough to make profitable, right? Yeah. I mean the the margins are so razor thin when it comes to food. Yeah, yeah. And especially like Hawaiian food. Um, you know, it's just labor intensive. Yeah. It's yeah. not difficult. It's it just takes a lot of time. You know, to do it you know, right and and to make the quality product. You know, right? I always wonder. Maybe you can answer this question. Um, you know, you look at a Hawaiian food plate and you, you can understand the connection of each individual thing in there to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. But how did lomi salmon ever get in the in the fold of that? Was it was it something else that they used before, like akule or something in the in the That in the you know, I'm I'm not really I'm not really sure but I, I don't know if you would know I mean, who who would know that? I don't know. It's more like anybody a food, know food, that food historian. The history yeah. of I think Craig had mentioned something about that. Really? Yeah, that it's not something from here. They just sort of made it up, started chopping. Yeah, it's probably like something that. that someone brought to some potluck sometime. You know, yeah. and then they're like, <laughs> "Oh, this is good." Yeah. Left over, didn't know. Yeah, and everyone, the everyone was like, "This I mean, is good." It's almost like a ceviche or something like that. <laughs> but you know, you know, yeah. I mean, it 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 Hawaii is such a melting pot of things and and you know cultures that. There's probably three or four different cultures wrapped into that one little I always wonder, dish, yeah, right? I always wonder but why salmon? You know, get so yeah. much fish over here to try. Why salmon? Well, the no, salmon has a natural salt. That's all. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I guess. So, um, uh, the other question, too, uh, for you in terms of moving the business forward, making sure that um, you're trying to stay ahead of the trends to a certain degree. I mean, uh, how have you been able to do that? Because... You know, you went dealing with your the loss of your dad, having to take over everything. COVID happens all at the same time, and you're like, okay, well, I got to take off all this stuff. And then at the same time, I know as a younger generation, right, it's it behooves you to sort of keep things moving, keep things going so that there's new stuff for people to come see, right? Because mm-hmm. there's, there's that... that that part of it that everybody goes to Young's because they remember what Young's is like and all that stuff, right? But you also got to have something there where people go, oh, I never this seen that yeah, before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just, I mean, kind of why we did like the 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 whole Lao Lao of the month with, with Lanai. We, we were doing things to kind of keep keep it fresh, do something different, you know, like so with that one, you know, we did the oxtail la la, we did a corned beef la la during like St. Oh, Patty's wow. Day. Mm. Um, oh, that sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah. And on, on your, uh, take it to your other note, uh, we we did a adobo turkey tail la la once. Oh. oh. Yeah. Why didn't you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we'll bring, we, we'll probably bring it back at, at one point. Yeah. Um, it just depends on, uh, Kind of supplies. Is there a warning like label on that la 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 one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there should be one. There should be, right? <laughs> yeah. I think you only allow like one turkey tail a week at least, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends who you talk to. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what do you do nowadays for for marketing and promotion? 
Is it a lot of just word of mouth or when you have these specials, I mean, you got to get the word out, right? Is it all social mm-hmm. media nowadays that you're doing this kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's mainly social media. I mean, that right now, nowadays, the power of social media is just, it's so strong. Um, yeah. So taking advantage of that, and I mean, it's it's free. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the least amount of uh, effort for us, I mean, I mean, cost-wise is, is always a good thing. Cost-wise, it's yeah. always awesome. Yeah. But work-wise, it's sometimes more work. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, it's a constant it's thing. It's a job too. in itself yeah, now. Yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys have somebody currently? Uh, we we do not we which we we just hired um, Bobby though yeah <laughs> to, oh, to handle you. that yeah okay. so yeah so he he'll be handling that well he's for good us at now. what he does he, he, he is, is. Yeah. he is yeah okay I have a totally separate topic if you guys don't mind um you know helping me out with a, a little editorial okay oh boy I you know you, Devin you know me right We're, we've been friends a long time. <laughs> You know my stance. I don't like a lot of uh, government regulation, uh, yes. stuff like this. But I feel on. like we have a problem, and it needs a bigger pro- power. Okay. Okay. Here's my thought. If you're going to produce a cookie, okay. the cookie should be mandated that it either has to be able to fit in your mouth, or it has to be chewy. Well, it has to taste good first and foremost. You cannot have a, a large cookie that's bigger than your mouth that's crunchy. Why? You can crack it. Yeah. Well, I don't understand. Because I, I bought these I bought these Keebler Elf cookies. This, this with, is the subject that you're holding <laughs> off for this, for this podcast. Yes. We needed to have him here to make sure. It's been bothering. Well, he's a food guy. So yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he can weigh relevant, yeah. yeah, somehow. Oh yeah. So la- I've been thinking about this since last night because okay. I ordered the Keebler Elf cookies do you know the ones with the stripes on them, with the fudge stripes? Yeah. And you can't fit that all in your mouth at one bite because they're too big. So then you try to take a bite out of it and it crumbles into like six different like pieces. Baby, okay. baby bites or something? Okay. No, I'm, you know, I'm trying to eat like half the mouth. cookie, but it, it breaks. Like when it, once you bite it, it breaks into... So I thought, this should be regulated. But you know, if you go to Mrs. Fields or... The, the cookies are like this big, John. You can't fit the whole thing in right. your mouth anyway. But I understand it's soft enough to break apart. That's right. You can break it apart and you can eat it. And it doesn't break into a crumbly mess of like 18 pieces. Oh. Mm. So were you like really frustrated and bothered yeah, by this? Was. Yes. Yeah. And I thought I'd bring it up today and see what you guys thought. Mm. Well, let's, add, let's ask the food guy. <laughs> I think you need one of those baby bibs that <laughs> catches the food. <laughs> <laughs> no, so now, now I'm forced... I, I'm playing for. I'm playing my video games. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Release the Fortnite. I know it's going back to the Fortnite okay, problem. Okay, I get it. I'm playing video games. I can't eat the cookie while I'm playing because I have to hold a plate yeah. under myself, or I have to stand over the sink, or stand oh, over the um, trash the struggle can. Struggle is real. You know, man. your freaking life is hard. And it bro. is. Wow. It is impeding my ability to eat the cookie because and play professional Fortnite and play video yeah, games. Yeah. Why don't but you just take the cookies, break it in half? Because it's a circle cookie. Just break the thing in half. half it doesn't break in half. It, if you need to try break it in half, it breaks into like three pieces per side. It yeah. just comes oh, into a crumbly mess. Of of I, I don't know how to help you, John. Mm. So have you tried cutting it? Yeah. With a knife on the cutting board? Yeah. That might help I have you. Not. I have not. <laughs> We're going to teach and you. That's why we have him on the pod. Yeah. There you okay. go. I will try that. I'll report back at our next podcast. Please do. We yeah. can't wait. I can't believe that was your thing. That was the... That was my wow. big thing. He goes, I got a topic, you know, today. I go, all right, what is it? He goes, you know, I can't tell you. I'm going to just turn it on the air. I'm like, I, I said it had to do with food, I can't right? wait. <laughs> okay, here's, yeah. a, here's another topic for you guys. Okay. We found out today yes. that the, um, the Aloha Stadium is supposed to be built by 2028. <laughs> okay. And that the actual district that the... Uh, so, so are we taking bets the on stadium, what you're going to actually that get That the stadium done? is supposed to be in will not be completed until like 2045 or something ridiculous what like that. district? Aren't they building on the same place? Yeah, but it's going to be yeah, the they're stadium. Gonna make like they're going to finish the stadium and, yeah. and then they're going to build all the crap around it. Oh. So like there's supposed to be shopping areas and parking oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. areas. But you can still that. play while it's being built, right? Like, well, see, that's the thing. We don't know. What they're saying is the stadium will be built by 2028. And everybody goes... Yay, that's five years from now. And then they that's go, pretty fast. Okay, now the whole district will be done by 2045. And you go, frick, we're going to be I, dead, I, bro. I, I feel like 2045 is optimistic. 
That's what other people are saying too. Twenty twenty eight is optimistic for the. Stadium. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even bothering even responding to that one. That one's yeah. not even a question. That's not yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. So but, I mean, will we have a football team by then to be able to do this? To God, be able to I, play I the games. So. I well, so. by the time no, this is, okay. This is my <laughs> crystal brain here. By the time that district is done, yeah, there will not be the football players will be avatars that are controlled by mind <laughs> by people's brain. You don't need a stadium; you need just a big screen. Then there still still be football, oh, but it's okay. going to be robots running around that's controlled by people's minds before this thing is done. That that's how long it's going to be before the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> what did you eat today before you came I know, bro. <laughs> I think the Ruger Nation does you again. Yeah. Uh, look, I I I called it in two thousand what is it, four, six, or what when did they announce rail? What? I'm like my my kids are gonna be the ones that are gonna be riding this rail and I didn't have I wasn't even married yet. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know yeah. Well, we knew that was we gonna could, be a problem. Everybody knew that, bro. Yeah. 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 So that really was prognostication there. <laughs> Yeah, because because people are going to think that football is too dangerous, so can't have humans playing football, but people will still want to watch football, so they're going to make robots that play football. <laughs> my yeah. thing is, my thing is, the stadium supposed to only seat what fifteen thousand, twenty thousand people, so we can't, we won't be able to have like concerts. You're not going to get Bruno Mars coming back for that little. Yeah, play. that's oh. that was the thing. Like um, all these concerts that we could have gotten yeah. are just completely bypassing us. Well, you know what? I always thought, why don't they do? They've done in the past, in like the seventies, they used to have concerts at the Diamond Head in Diamond Head. Yeah, the Crater yeah. Festival. Bring, bring that back, like, man. That's military owned now, right? Yeah. Civil, yeah. Civil well, defense. you know, yeah. we can yeah. say, yeah. hey, I don't think the civil defense people want to have yeah. a bunch <laughs> of drunk <laughs> folks sitting there at a concert. Yeah. <laughs> why? You could have, you know, there's, you could make parking over there, like on the, on the field on the flat part and then the, the concert and stuff it'd be a very cool venue and it would it'd be a little bit farther away from the home so you wouldn't have to worry as much about the noise mm-hmm. as the shell right would you guys have any other location for the stadium that would work because it wouldn't work on on Coppola, in Coppola, right oh, Why, there's a lot awesome. of land but <clears throat> it would work Land wise, yeah, uh, but yeah. I mean, can you imagine yeah. this infrastructure wise? Probably, probably and busing not. The, yeah. the, the players over from UH yeah. wouldn't work either. But, but you just have to make the rail reach all the way to UH, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you get one super ferry that just brings a team over, super ferry, yeah. <laughs> but putting a state so you would put the stadium at, at Manoa, Mano. <sighs> I don't know if that, there's not enough space there, I would think. I there, there's definitely, there definitely is space, and there, there were some really nice conceptual drawings of what it would look like at on UH. on the campus yeah at, mm. at uh i mean they could even do it in the current spot and but it would take some moving but i think back in june jones time i was talking with him once and it was he was he had a plan of building it kind of where that grass um practice field but a quarry okay. the quarry yeah, yeah. Oh, okay and uh, building it up in that section you know like a, a twenty thousand uh fifteen or twenty thousand seats in there and you know, it, it, there's something about having the stadium on campus that makes yeah. it yeah, 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 just yeah. so much better. I yeah. think it would it would make the student <clears throat> experience better. I mean, when mm-hmm. I went to that sure. first um, Chow USC game with mm-hmm. UH, we went up to um, California to watch it. Mm-hmm. That feeling of having that stadium right where the school is is a big difference, man, than going than you know like Aloha Stadium, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, having it on campus. Yeah. Um, I've gone to a few of them, different one, road games where Hawaii's played, especially the bigger schools. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, going to uh, even Washington. You know, Husky Stadium, and uh, I went to that Ohio State game. Uh, oh. It was it was something else. I mean, just the atmosphere oh, that's all yeah. around it. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's you have the college bar that's right there that is just packed. You know sea of red of people and you know it, it's it's a different feeling you know the traditions that they, you can you can build when yeah. having it i mean hawaii kind of had something like that before when they had the old honolulu stadium right you know yeah. that, that, one of the people that, that march that, that march <laughs> that march down right from from campus down oh, yeah, university yeah, yeah. to the stadium right that must have been crazy yeah yeah i mean did well, you were you too young or did you go to the sugar bowl uh i didn't go to the sugar bowl but i was um you know i I, I watched it. I mean, we were. I was at every game Until prior, then, yeah. prior to the Sugar Bowl, but <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't make yeah. it to the the Sugar Bowl itself. Yeah. Yeah. 
Good times. All right, sorry, I kind of derailed the. No, no, no. Yeah. You're fine. With You're fine. Thing. I, I just okay. hope you, oh. you you iron out your cookie situation, though. Really. I was just upset. <laughs> I, well, buy I, smaller yeah. cookies, but yeah. they may come like Well, that, okay, know. so my favorites are the uh, Chips Ahoy Chewy. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, what, but what I do is I only eat those when I'm on Maui during Christmas. And I just buy, you know, I buy and I eat for... Because I'm there for two weeks, so I just eat cookies for two weeks. Yeah, but you don't <laughs> eat cookies throughout the rest of the year. No, I don't. Because that would, that's what makes the cookie special during the Christmas time. So I can mm. look forward to cookies, right? This is this is <laughs> some weird shit you're talking about. I just, gotta, I just gotta say, yeah. like your well, your interest, your, there, there's levels of this. I've known you. We've known each other I for feel like twenty like, something uh, years, and I'm like, bro, things are g- especially when it comes to food. To me, like if you eat food, the same food all the time, it, it's not special and it doesn't taste good. Right. Yeah, but you, 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 yeah, yeah. you just right. talked about being <laughs> except, <laughs> except, <laughs> except Rugerlicious. Except Rugerlicious. <laughs> That's how good it is. I have two exceptions. The Rugerlicious and W&M Burgers. I can eat those every day. And I, for some reason, I don't get sick of them. I don't know why. <laughs> so then but, did, you, did you get tired of eating Hawaiian food after a while? I mean, you, you do in a sense. I mean, uh, it, it's funny because I, every time we hire somebody uh, and we interview them and we talk about, you know, have you had our food and stuff like that, uh, and, and they always say, oh, I can eat it every day. And I said, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so where's your – Mark that date yeah. down. Where's your go-to um, place to eat when you don't feel like eating Hawaiian food? Uh, that, that's tough, man. It, it kind of really depends on, on, you know, what kind of food I'm – um, you heading to for. McDonald's sometimes, or do you go uh, to Zippy's? Or I mean, ra- rarely McDonald's or you know, like Zippy's. I, I I tend to go to more of the you know the smaller uh, mom, and mom and pop restaurants mm-hmm. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, I, I like. I think growing up in it, I just what What's your favorite mom and well, pop's restaurant other than Young's? Ah, <sighs> that's um. In Kailua, <laughs> round table pizza. Uh, are you still, are you still uh, in Kailua? <laughs> No, no, so I moved out of Kailua, but I mean, I really actually used to like this one spot in Kailua. It was like a little Italian spot. I'm trying to remember oh, what the yeah. name was. Yeah. I think it was called uh, Pepino's or something like that. Um, oh, Pepino. It, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pepino's was, I mean, the, the pizza place. Yeah, pizza. Oh, okay. and, and they had like, you know, real home style oh, Italian yeah. pe- yeah. But it was, I mean, literally like this old uh, Nana was making the stuff in the back and then the the son was it would yeah, help Michael. out in the front yeah. michael is my friend and yeah yeah his family ran that restaurant did round table run them out or what were, were there just two um, pizza places no, they were just they were yeah, think, yeah it, was, it was hard to kind of it, it's hard to run a small business yeah. yeah but it literally it would take them 35 minutes to make a pizza <laughs> you'd be yeah. waiting oh, really? well, the pizza was good if the they pizza, pizza was unbelievable yeah. the pizza it was, was yeah. unbelievable it was amazing like down to the crust you yeah. like you know you could turn the thing upside down and just like lick the crust and it, oh, yeah. it, it'd be like <laughs> yeah. it's it was so good it yeah. was, oh, yeah. it was just really really yeah. good that was one of my yeah. my favorites have you guys good. ever been to harbor pub so you know where um the prince the prince hotel hawaii prince or what is it called now? It's not Hawaii Prince anymore. No, it's still. still oh, okay. Prince, then there's that that steak place right by between there and the Ely Kai. Chardos. Chardos. No, underneath. Outback, you mean? Outback. Uh, or underneath steak? there. Yeah. There is a pub. That's like a chart house. But underneath it, it's called a Harbor Pub. Oh, okay. okay. And it so it's it's really just a bar. Yeah, I've seen mm-hmm. it. I walked past that. But sign. but yeah. they serve pizzas there that are. One of the best pizzas you're ever gonna eat. Mm. It's mm. like round table pizza, but okay. it, it's a little different. But the the um the crust of the of the pizza is like a cracker. It's like really oh yeah, yeah. Mm, it's oh, like really crust, um, yeah. yeah. So you you when you bite it, it's like soft. You know, you have the soft doughy, and then it has the crunch of the Ooh, of the good. bottom. Yeah. yeah, we used to we used to go to um from work. We would like skip out. Is it and still there? Over there. It's still yeah. there. Yeah, it's yeah, still yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Yeah. They they have a sign up that says, "Oh, you want to buy pizza?" Oh, we should go try. Yeah. Yeah. I I end up getting a I end up going to Red Lobster instead. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, but I have to stop Hawaiian, and get a pizza. Hawaiian food and then you like pizza. Oh no! I mean, my one of my easiest go to like foods is is usually Japanese, like and sushi. Um, you know, to be more yeah. specific, but you know, mm. it, it's costly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, Japanese food in general, man very expensive but but there's some really good places out there i mean mm-hmm. it's as soon as you walk in the place and everybody either he's sitting down eating is japanese 
or, <laughs> or everybody behind the counter is speaking Japanese. You're like, okay, I'm all right. Yeah. The food's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel about Chinese food places too. Yeah. No, I get scared though because sometimes going to have stuff wrong. <laughs> well, that, that's not how you know they're real authentic, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can we talk about uh, the the women behind Young's Fish Market? You talk about your mom. Talk about the, you know, we all loved your dad. Yeah, Let's give some props to your mom. Give some props to your wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who deals with three three daughters? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. No, yeah, my my mom was definitely one of the. Uh, you know, when you when you talk about like matriarchs, yeah, she yeah. she was definitely the one kind of raising us through the time because, l- like you said, my dad was uh, very much in the business a mm-hmm. lot of the time. So that's you know, that's it's hard. Yeah. Big yeah, big props so to my was mom. Was she a stay at home mom? She no, no, she she was she working right? full time. Yeah, she worked at Parks and Rec, uh, you know, in in Kaneohe for yeah, about thirty years, I think. Yeah, and man. So she would she was always the one picking us up dropping us off to school you know soccer practice uh, like uh, all those different things so did so. your older sisters kind of like raise you in a way to help uh, help be your beat you up <laughs> beat leave, you on the, leave you on the side of the road say get they, home yeah. <laughs> no no i mean yeah they, they helped but uh you know we were all pretty pretty close in age we were only two years apart oh, each, okay. each of us so my oldest sister is only four years older than oh, me okay. so not, it's not well, that's why you had that three kids like bang bang bang. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, that worked out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's 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 funny. We're all the same, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, yeah, my, my sisters, my, my sisters were definitely you know helpful. You know, but I I was always just like the kind of doing my own thing, mm. being the only boy in the yeah, family, yeah. And, and, and and you know being surrounded by. Uh, my two sisters and my mom. Most of the time, it's just uh, I'll try to find my own space and yeah. <laughs> do, my, do my own thing. And now you have be... four women at home, that four girls been at home. Kind of uh, not yeah. being raised in my yeah. 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 Did they bully you and put makeup on you and stuff that make you? No, no. Oh, okay. No. 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 They had yeah. each other for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, your wife. Um, you've been married how long now? Uh, I've been married At least five and a half years. <laughs> at least, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, at least, no, since 2016. So, um, yeah, no, it, she's she's been she's been great. She she definitely holds it down on the the home front. Um, oh, well, what was uh, it like? Because like, if you start when you start dating a woman, and then she realizes, oh, you're the guy from Young's Fish Market. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's gonna be a whole other thing. Like, did you guys have to have a sit down and go, okay, babe? This thing is really cool, but just know, you know what I mean? Like, there's mornings I'm going to have to get up at 2 o'clock yeah, in the morning. I got to yeah. go pick up fish or I got to go do this thing. And this is that, this is that life that there's we're There's butterfish, Lao Lao. Yeah. And then there's you. It's funny enough, though. Yeah. yeah she, we never really had, like, the, a big, like, sit down. But she, uh, you know, through, the, like, the dating process and, and you know, the time we, we knew each other, she saw what i was you know what i was doing mm, as, yeah. as far as work and everything so yeah. um she kind of knew going in before we we got married and everything but it, it, it's always a she knew it, the job know, was dangerous when she took yeah, it, <laughs> it, it it's it's always a, a tough thing for them because you know it's it just being a business owner entrepreneur um it, it it's like that's your baby yeah, you know? yeah and, and so a lot it of times is. that you know that in our mind will come first and, and we forget well, for we you, forget I mean, that a lot of times. It's something that's been yeah. in the family since your grandfather, so you know. Yeah, there's there's an extra added responsibility for. Yeah, it. is your is your wife there. local? She is. She mm-hmm. is. Yeah. So she was she was um, raised here and and she went to Punahou and. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, no. My daughter <laughs> my daughter is going to Punahou now. It's a, it's a it's a great school, but. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's funny enough though. She she really when we first met she really didn't know. Uh, what Young's Fish Market was. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Her father <laughs> did. On the other hand. I'm like, yeah. marry that boy now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her, her, yeah. Her, her grandparents were actually longtime customers of ours. No yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that before? Or no, just coincidence? no, no, no. Yeah. As I got to know, you know, the family and everything, yeah. um, then we learned, you know, I learned that, oh, yeah, they, they've been coming to our, our place for quite a few years wow. and stuff oh, like wow. that. Yeah. Oh, wow. How cool. Because so, they, I mean... The the grandparents lived right up like you know kind of a level heights. So, uh-huh. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 
Okay, so Daniel, I know you have a, a hard out. You have another thing you have to get to. So one last question. Mm-hmm. And we are uh, technically on a music channel, so we have one music question. <laughs> okay. If you were stranded on a desert island for all of eternity, you're a young guy. I gotta, okay, let's go. <laughs> and you could only stream three <laughs> artists yeah. for the rest of time, their library. What would those three artists be? Wow. That's a... That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can take inspiration from up here, maybe from that guy sitting right there, yeah. you know. So, oh yeah, no. Um, I I definitely like you know a lot of you know more of the older stuff. But okay, I, I, I would say older stuff. He's gonna say like, you know, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I grew up a lot with with my my dad, uh, you know, and and him, his music and stuff like that. So oh, it, so it's it, all it, Kalapana, it, and Gabby, Pahinu, and stuff like that. Yeah, it? I mean, for for Hawaiian, yeah. and, and yeah. you know, real, like, he, he was real big on to, into the oldies and uh, and stuff like that. So I, I actually, I mean, like probably one of them for me would probably be Michael Jackson. Okay, um, yeah, oh, you good, know, good. it's just. The whole off thing the wall from, days or the no, more no, no, I mean only recent. from Jackson Five through oh, you know okay. through wow. his his whole his I whole did say career, artists yeah. because they he's not gonna know albums yeah. <laughs> they, know, they, know, they know albums they just don't know how to put it on the music. <laughs> no, no, no. we we had we had that yeah yeah my dad my dad's had a huge collection of that stuff and we you know That's awesome. I hope I, it's I still had, around because yeah. it's, it's it's coming back it's gonna be worth money man yeah. <laughs> we, we, we have some of it still yeah yeah um I. I do like, I don't know, I, for country, I, would, I, I like oh. country music too. And, okay. and just, uh, so I, Florida Georgia Line, uh-huh. that's a yeah, good one. Yeah. Huh. And then uh, on on the local side, I, I really like Kili Reichel. Stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, he's, just, he's amazing. Very yeah. eclectic tastes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. that's a little bit of everything. Yeah. Okay. I could deal with that. Yeah, you yeah. can deal with that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got some dance with Michael Jackson. You yeah. have the relaxing mm-hmm. stuff with Kaylee. Yeah, mm-hmm. country Good to mix. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, Dan, thanks so much for being here. I, I, like I said, I know you got you got another mm-hmm. meeting to get to, but we appreciate <laughs> you coming on, talking about food. We're gonna fix this cookie problem, <laughs> and everybody else will tune in next week for our last podcast of 2023. If you can believe it. And get yourself some butterfish la la from Young's Fish Yeah, Market. go get some butterfish la That sounds <laughs> But don't take mine, please. This thing went by fast. Yeah, this year. Yeah. It went by so fast, man. Super but fast. We appreciate you it all. It helped that we all caught so COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, see ya. Take Bye. care. Bye.